the generic geriatric cyclist. Episode 20, Surviving the Summer Heat. Hello, and welcome to the channel. I'm John Smith, also known as the generic geriatric cyclist. Today we're going to talk about surviving and flourishing in the warm days of summer. First, to ride in the heat successfully, we must get our bodies acclimated to riding in the heat. We all have slightly varying degrees of heat tolerance. It depends upon our constitution, some medications we might be on, and some health conditions we might have. A few lucky people are like camels, but the rest of us can only go a few miles before we collapse in the sand. Introduce your body to the heat gradually and never underestimate its power to hurt you. Our bodies are amazing in how we can acclimate to the heat over a period of time, but I wouldn't press my luck. Here's yesterday's weather. Fortunately, it was a scheduled rest day for me. Today, it was indoors on the trainer. I'm not going out in that. Summer mornings are hot enough, especially in a heat wave. Avoid riding in the afternoon. If you're signed up for a long event, and when the day comes, it's too hot to safely do the distance, skip the ride and be the first in line to enjoy the after ride food and festivities. Also, save your harder efforts, such as hilly rides, long rides, and interval workouts for relatively cooler days. What else can we do to survive the summer heat? If you have a friend who's willing to throw a bucket of cold water on you, then do that. My first recommendation is to drink a lot of water. My next recommendation is to drink even more water. On top of that, try drinking a lot more water. To your health. A votre sante. A salute. The traditional recommendation is to consume a water bottle every hour. I'd recommend doubling that to a water bottle every half hour during hotter days. Phil Guyman, who was a European pro for 10 years, said that all of his peers on the tour drank a lot of water. Every one of them had to get up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. Finally, I've got something in common with pro cyclists. So what about electrolyte replacement? Supposedly, you don't need electrolyte replacement during your ride unless it's longer than four hours. But why take any chances at all? Some Gatorade or electrolyte tablets mixed in your water bottle will do the job nicely. So what are the negative consequences of not hydrating enough? Heat cramps are the mildest form of heat-related illnesses. Symptoms are things like excessive thirst, fatigue, and cramps. Next in seriousness is heat exhaustion, which can add things like faintness, dizziness, weakness, fatigue, and nausea. I suffered a bout of heat exhaustion once when I was a runner. I became dizzy and a little disoriented. It wasn't a pleasant experience. The most severe outcome is heat stroke. If that occurs, you need immediate medical attention. Back in the 1980s, when I ran 10K races, I was in an event on an especially hot day. At about mile five, I started seeing other runners spinning around and collapsing on the pavement. At the finish line, there were tents set up like a Civil War field hospital where about a hundred runners were lying on cots covered in wet sheets with IV bottles stuck in their arms. Severe heat symptoms are more likely to occur in runners than in cyclists, but we're certainly not exempt. But we have the advantage of carrying our own water and we have the wind we generate from our forward motion. As cyclists, the wind is often our adversary. Headwinds are like a hill that never ends. And then there's the wind chill in colder weather. But in the heat of summer, 
the wind can be our friend as it evaporates our sweat and makes us cooler or really a little less hot. I hope today's episode didn't come off like scaremongering. I'd just like you to be safe out there. So, so long for now, and I hope to see you back again. Thanks for watching.